You long to produce more praises than curses, where instead of tearing people down, you're going to long to build them up, and you're going to search for ways to build them up. See, when fasting is only about all the external stuff, it's only about the time that we spend away from that activity or that food. And I'm sure that we all experience people who do this, people who give up chocolate and then spend the next 40 days complaining about how they give up chocolate. They haven't actually given it up, right? They're just not eating it. Their lives are still defined by chocolate. So it's not just an external thing. When fasting is just that external action, it's all about the number of days before we engage it again. But if we see fasting as something internal, then it's about that inner transformation. We don't give up something in order just to give it up for a time. We give up something in order to be transformed. In order to grow in Christ's likeness, to engage in a deeper and more fuller way the life that God wants us to live. So God says to Israel in verse 6, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. God is saying that true fasting is about liberation. It's about transformation. It's about involving ourselves in the life that God wants us to live, involving ourselves in the mission of God in this world. Is, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked, clothe them and do, do not turn away from your own flesh and blood? I think verse 7 is quite poignant, particularly uh, when we think about fasting only in terms of giving up uh, some type of food, you know, that, that current way that we normally do it. I think it's quite poignant when God says, is this not a fasting? Is it not to share your food with the hungry? Maybe if you've given up some, some food-related item for Lent, maybe for the umpteenth time, dare I say that you try this. Instead of fasting from that beloved item of food, Maybe every time that you have it, maybe share it. Or every time you go out and get your coffee, buy a coffee for someone else. Or if you go out to get your treat, maybe put $5 into a food bank every time you go. How will that change the way that you see yourself and the life that you live? How will that change the way you see all the abundant blessings that God has given you? How will that change the way that you see your call to share the love and the mercy of God in this world? Fasting is a powerful discipline because it shocks our system. It shocks us out of the complacencies and sometimes the idle idolatries that sometimes fill up our lives. In fasting, we remove ourselves from all that which distracts us. And we work hard at connecting with God. John the Baptist says, I must decrease so he can increase. It's the same dynamic in fasting. Something in our lives decreases so Christ's role can increase. That's the fasting that is rewarded by God. Verse 8 says, then. It's a conditional phrase. If you engage in fasting in this manner that God has deigned it to be, that more internal transformation than external absence, then light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteous one will go before you, and the glory of your Lord will be your rear guard. It describes being immersed in the presence of God which enfolds us. Your healing will quickly occur, that internal healing, that internal yearning for a connection with God, the internal feeding upon his presence. In fasting, we move away from that which is external, which distracts and moves us off course. We focus more on that internal nourishment. And later in the gospel, Jesus says, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me. We uncover that reality in our lives through the discipline of fasting. And we are surrounded by God. God will lead us and guide us. God goes before us as a leader and as a guide. 
And God says that I will be your rear guard. God will also support us and protect us. God before us and God behind us. So in what manner have you entered into a Lenten fast this year? Uh, Is it an action that you've decided to try to get away from? Is it an object of food or drink that you decided, I'm going to give it up for this Lenten fast? You know, if you've never tried a full fast from from all food, uh, I encourage you to try it. Don't try to be a rock star out of the gate and don't do 24 hours or 36 hours. Maybe try 12. Maybe decide from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to spend the time when meals come or when snack time comes. Instead of getting some food, I'm going to spend some time there, just in some silence or some prayer, or I'm going to read some of the Bible. If you want some help, there's tons of resources in how to structure that and activities that you can do during that type of fast. If you need help with that, let me know and I can point you in the right direction. But whatever your fast is, if you decided to give up something during Lent, Ask that deeper question. What is the fast that the Lord requires of you? What is it that draws you away from God? If you've decided to give up something, how are you making that act of giving up an interior discipline? Because Lent and fast are not just about a time away from something. It's a time with someone. It's a time with our Lord. When we do our fasts in that way, then we are fully engaging our Lenten observance. And we are going deeper and deeper in our relationship with Christ. And that is what the season of Lent is all about.